Good evening. This week, Apple did something it almost never does, which is ask for help. Google's Gemini will now power the next generation of Siri. Apple still builds the hardware, the polish, the ecosystem. But the intelligence running it, that's Google's domain from now onwards. For months, we've called this an AI cold war right here on front page. Turns out, it ended the way most wars do, with a deal. This front page by AIM Network. Let's of course go ahead and decode why the most valuable real estate in your pocket just became a Google colony. First of all, we need to of course silence the rumor mill. Just to be clear, there won't be a Gemini app coming to your iPhone. And Siri will not answer to, hey Google. No, that won't be happening. Because what has happened is far more interesting and consequential. Apple and Google have signed a long-term collaboration and it shows its presence on the thinking layer of Siri. Here's of course a great way to understand that. Apple still controls the basics. Our data stays on the device, private cloud compute stays Apple run, privacy rules don't change because, well, we all know about Apple's stance when it comes to privacy. But when Siri has to really think, when the question gets complex, when reasoning matters, the intelligence required to address this is where Gemini will showcase its presence. A quick example to well clarify. We can of course think of it like a laptop. Apple builds the chassis, but this development is an Intel inside moment for AI. Except it is Gemini inside. You might wonder why Tim Cook did this. Because Apple spent two years in the lab. They looked at their own models. They looked at GPT 4.0. They looked at Gemini 2. And of course, the feedback on Apple's internal tech was polite. Safe? Yes. Smart enough to win? A clear no, but politely. Which compelled Apple to break its golden rule. We know that usually they build everything. They own the silicon, they own the software. But not this time. What they did was they went shopping. They tested Anthropic, flirted with perplexity, examined Mistral, and after all of that, they chose their biggest rival. Let us be clear. It is far from a love story. Ladies and gentlemen, it is actually an arranged marriage between two trillion dollar families who need each other to well survive the next decade. Alphabet hit four trillion dollars. They overtook Apple in market cap. Why? Well, because Google has the distribution. Gemini is already in three billion Android device, uh, devices. And with this deal, it will be making its way into two billion Apple devices. And of course, we can say this together, that's definitely massive. A year ago, the narrative was, Google is fumbling, OpenAI is the future. Have you noticed how the narrative has changed now? Google has the chips, the TPUs, Google has the cloud and has the model. And now, Google powers the competition as well, crowning them as not just a search company anymore. So if you're wondering what I am right now, the point is, where does this leave Sam Altman? Where does this leave OpenAI? We remember the chat GPT integration Apple announced last year. Yeah, remember that one? That, by the way, is still there. Gemini becomes the foundation, the default brain, if you will. Chat GPT, well, it gets pushed to a supporting role, an opt-in. The specialist consultant we call to solve a googly of a question. But we, of course, never disturb the guy who's running the office. We talked about, well, OpenAI's agentic commerce protocol, and we highlighted that they want to be the interface where you and I buy everything. Well, Google just said, checkmate to that, my friend. Between Android and iOS, Gemini now holds the keys to the assistance on almost every phone on Earth. What does this mean, actually, for the iPhone users? It's this. 
In the next 12 months, Siri might actually work. No more. Here's what I found on the web. We are actually talking about multi-step reasoning. Book me a flight to Delhi, block my calendar and text my mum the itinerary. Just in one breath. And then it is done. This is the shift from apps to agents. We won't be clicking buttons anymore. We will tell the computer what we want. And thanks to this deal, that agent is powered by Google, regardless of the phone brand. But then, as we know, there is usually a catch. Google owns Search, owns Chrome, owns Android, and also now Google powers the brain of the iPhone. That is a lot of cognitive, actually real estate. And no guesses, Elon Musk is already tweeting about it. And the regulators are definitely sharpening their knives. We know very well that Apple promises that it's private. They say our data stays in their private cloud. But we are moving toward a world with one dominant in intelligence layer. Are we comfortable with that? Are you? And of course, on that note, here is the front page take. Apple, sometimes also referred to as, well, the control freak, finally admitted that it needed a brain transplant. Google, the sleeping giant, just woke up and bought the whole building. OpenAI still has the buzz, but it doesn't own the devices. Sure, the story reads like Siri uses Gemini, but the real story is that AI has no permanent enemies, only permanent infrastructure. Apple owns the glass screen. Google owns the mind behind it. And us, well, we are about to live in a world where our iPhone thinks like a pixel, even if the logo on the back never really changes. Please do let us know in the comments below. Are we fine with Google running our iPhone's brain or was made by Apple the only reason you bought it in the first place? Like, share, subscribe and always remember, think AI, think AIM.